my, my job is to somehow make them curious enough or persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they came from and what they are into and what is already there and just to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them. And I will do it by whatever means necessary. Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about healing our intimacy disorders, unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first ourselves and then others. Every episode, we will talk about advice you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow in your self-worth. I'm Sheena Lachey, love addiction coach and trauma specialist. Let's begin. Hello, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. I am so happy to be in front of you all today for a new episode, and I hope that you are feeling loved and cherished wherever you are, however you are, that you're having a wonderful day, and if it's not going so well, I pray that you find something that will make you feel loved and cherished and supported. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at one of the components of our Healed and Love Woman framework, and we haven't one, done one of those in a while. However, we're not going to do a big deep dive over one of the branches, but we are going to look at one of the symptoms that shows that you are still living and being love avoidant and hopes that it will give you encouragement to move closer towards being love available. So one of the things that happens when you are acting in love avoidance is that you will tend to withhold love from other people. And sometimes the withholding love looks like you putting up walls with people, right? And not letting people in and people have a hard time getting to know you. But what it can also look like is when you're already in an intimate relationship with someone, whether or not it is a family member, a romantic partner, a friend, a child, the way that you assert that you are uncomfortable, the way you get people to do what you want, the way that you show that you're not happy is by withholding love. And so withholding love can look like stonewalling, but sometimes it looks like shifting your energy to be negative, to be heavy, to punish them by um, dampering the mood because they said or did something that wasn't what you wanted it to be or that made you feel some kind of way, whether or not it was a real trigger or it was something that you were just feeling irritated by. And and not to say just feeling irritated by because you're entitled to have your feelings, but they did something that you didn't like. And the way that you showed them that you didn't like that is by shutting down the warmth, shutting down the affection, shutting down the comfort and compassion, the soothing nature that you typically have, the fun nature you typically have, you withhold that. And while us being able to tune into doing that in dangerous situations is very important, I think it is very, it is vital for you to know that when you are in an emotionally toxic or dangerous situation, that those are not the places, those are not the people, those are not the situations for someone to get an energetic free pass to everything that you are, right? That those are the times that it is wise for you to pull back. However, when we look at love avoidance and when we look at it in the context of secure relationships, what we're going to talk about today is that it happens even in places and in situations that are supposedly supposed to be safe, that because you are still struggling with your love avoidance, you don't know how to turn it off. And that learned response from childhood, because all of us know how to do that, because we saw it growing up, because someone did that to us. Someone, when they were disappointed in us, when we didn't do what they wanted us to do, when we fell short of perfect, when we were any type of inconvenient towards them, they took away the love, they took away the comfort, and we knew, even without words a lot of times, that we had messed up. And so we carried that on to adulthood until we learned how to do otherwise. So what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about what that looks like a little bit more in hopes of it being an encouragement for you to use the other skills that you have learned towards being more love available towards people. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump on in. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Before we get started, let's take a small break to say thank you to this week's sponsors. 
So y'all know one of my core tenets in helping us flourish in our relationships and mental health is clearing things out that no longer serve us. And for the spring season, I have a suggestion for one way you can start fresh with only the things that help you move forward if you're feeling stuck mentally and are in need of medical support. At forhers.com, you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted anxiety and depression medication if it's right for you. The process is 100% online, including unlimited check-ins, provider messaging, and support along the way. Plus, to make things even simpler, you can get your first month of treatment for just $25 if prescribed. To get started, go to forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers.com slash S-P-R-I-N-G. And look, I know that for some people, for many of us, most of us, getting access to proper mental health care can be a source of stress in and of itself. And that's why I love that HERS makes it so simple. So again, get started today at forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers.com slash S-P-R-I-N-G. This offer is only available if prescribed. Prescription products do require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. A subscription is also required. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about why we withhold love and softness and warmth from people who we love when we are upset with them. First of all, being real, it feels good. (laughs) Like, some of y'all probably weren't expecting me to say that, but when you are feeling emotionally taken advantage of, unheard, discarded, um, ignored, or all of those things physically, financially, mentally, spiritually, when you are feeling disempowered and unloved, it feels so good if the person that you are connected to actually cares about this, because sometimes we're trying to punish people who really don't care about us, which is why I'm focusing on our securely attached people, the people who are available to us. It feels very good or satisfying or relieving for you to take back some of your power by shutting this off, shutting off their source to something that they want that you are in control of, right? They may have taken the power away. They have made you, they may have made you look silly. They have made you feel embarrassed. They have made you feel, tap into like some desperation that you've had or some, some trauma that you've had around something that you really needed that they withheld from you either by accident or on purpose. Whatever the story is, it feels very good for you to take your control back and withhold that love. And even more so when it's someone who cares about you because those people, because they are available and they care about you, they are going to make a fuss when you withhold it. They are going to ask you what's wrong. They are going to try to apologize. They're going to try to make it better. Their night is going to be ruined because you're unhappy, right? Like all of that feels so good. Again, if you're dealing with someone who's toxic, you'll be trying to withhold love and play all these games for days and for weeks, waiting for them to to catch on, right? Waiting for them to see that the text was ignored, waiting for them to notice that you were mad, waiting for them to care, right? A lot of times people who are toxic and unavailable to us, they see it and they just don't care. So you You amp it up, you ramp it up to try to get them to re-engage. But the people who love you, the people who are available, the ones who are trying to court you, the the kids, um, the the parents, the siblings, the friends, oh, the, the gratification is, if not instant, very, very, very soon after you start, right? They can sense the energy and they don't like it. And connected to that, I mean, this is wrapped up into the first part. It is is part of your self-protection. When you have been a victim of people who have taken you for granted, who have not loved you, who have not shown up for you, people who you put trust in them only for them to flake out at the last minute, only for you to start to to have trust in a relationship, only for it to go off the side, side rails, this is familiar And this helps you make sure that no matter what happens down the road, your bases are covered, 
right? If they actually really love you, if they actually really care, then they are going to make a scene, whether or not it's big or just them, you know, trying to have a conversation with you and kind of begging you and trying to, you know, um, bring flowers and trying to ask what's going on. If they actually care for you, they're going to try, right? Because again, especially if you are love avoidant, you have learned to live this life independent. You have learned to live this life without needing, quote unquote, other people. But the gag is you do need people, which is why you're in relationships with people. You, even though you have spent your whole life trying to and learning how to perfect the ability to be an emotional island, if you're listening to this podcast, I'll say that maybe not everybody. If you're listening to this podcast, you do have emotional needs. You do want to be loved. You do want to have tenderness. You do want to have softness and connection. And when that doesn't happen or when that's threatened, it does bother you. Again, you have learned how to how to have a whole lot of distractions. You have learned how to build maybe a whole life full of hobbies. You have maybe even learned how to spread yourself between so many different relationships, whether it be your mentors or your mentees, your friends, your family members, multiple different lovers. But you want that firm foundation. And the way that you make sure that you're not disappointed is that you spread yourself through so many people so they can get a little bit of everything um, so that nobody can, not one person can disappoint you. So withholding love is how I protect myself. I have learned that when I'm in an intimate relationship with someone and they slight me, again, whether it's big or small, and we're, I'll talk about big or small in the next sentence or so, but if they have slighted me, the shields go up. Right. I imagine like the bomb shelters and someone presses the button and all the steel doors go go down. That's that's what happens here. Right. And until I know that it's safe, until I know that you care, until I know that this is not going to happen again, the walls stay up. So what are some of these small and or big things that happen in a secure relationship? Again, not the dysfunctional ones. Those folks, y'all need to let go of and go into no contact. But um, these, which by the way, y'all, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a book about no contact. I am going to write a book about no contact. What I'm currently thinking that I'm going to do is I'm going to write the book in a container so people who are interested can join me for 30 days and get access to the book ahead of time. Tell me how it's working for you, ask questions, get coached, maybe go through the 30 days of a no contact process together um, and then publish it fully afterwards. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I got in my noggin right now. But either way, I look forward to having the full no contact process in a book soon. So at least the no contact process, the way I teach it for love addicts and then all the things that go along with that. Um, Yeah. So anyways, the people that are secure and available, the small things that can happen there is they didn't respond to a text or a phone call in the time that they usually do or what you would expect them to do. They didn't plan a date with the energy and the enthusiasm that they usually do. And you're feeling like maybe they don't really care. Related to that, they show up to an event, but they kind of have a a pissy attitude. Like they're not super negative and rude, but they don't seem as excited to be there. And so now you're upset. And here's the thing, when we talk about secure and available people, the thing about these relationships is these are anomalies. The reason that these people are secure and available is because they consistently show up for us. They are consistently being emotionally available for us and talking with us. They consistently apologize. They consistently look for ways that are thoughtful to to show that they love us. They consistently make us laugh and we have fun together and there's no drama. But the threat when you're dealing with love avoidance that you don't realize until you start to do this work because this is a body-based Um, response, like there's mental work that we do with this, y'all, but it's also body-based. It passes everything logical in your mind, 
Because what I'm about to say is even though you're dealing with someone who has shown up in all of these ways, um, and that if you write down the truth and the facts of what's going on, like they're good people, everything in your body is still like, screw them. <laughs> yes, that may be true. But this right here, I don't like it. And even when you are trying your best, like when you've done your work long enough to be able to point out, okay, this is me being triggered and this is my emotions and this is my stuff. And yeah, I might have a right to feel what I want to feel, but I don't want to do this right now and I don't want to shut down right now. Even when you're logically having that thought, even when you logically know that that's not what you want to do, your body cannot comply. It might be able to comply halfway, but you're still mumbling your words. You're still half passing the sugar over if they ask for some sugar for their coffee. You're slowly walking with them. You know, you're holding their hands, but it's, it's, it's a light. It's a tender. You know, like you are showing with your energy, with your body, with your participation or lack thereof that you are not present. And logically, you cannot stop it because this is a trauma response. And it is a trauma response because it is very difficult to trust. And here's the thing about when we do things out of habit. The more we do the habit, the more it reinforces it, the stronger it gets. We have to train ourselves to do love available behaviors and move closer to people versus further away. We need to initiate contact. Contact. We need to initiate closeness. And when we are dealing with the body-based triggers that get in the way of that, we have to deal with it and understand that this stuff existed before they got here and it's going to exist way after. And we're going to continue to look for, because our trauma needs it, our trauma response needs for us to feel safe. So instead of it scanning the environment and saying, oh, okay, this is good. We can rest here. It's consistently looking for threats. And it's like, you can't rest until all the threats are gone. But here's the thing. As long as you're going to be in a human relationship with another human, there's going to be threats because one, people, you know, what I was talking about earlier, the, exa the example of, you know, they come and like, they're not, you know, they don't text right away or, you know, they're having a conversation, but they're not fully present or they show up and they're like distracted. The truth is people have a whole life outside of you, even when they love you. Even when you are the best thing ever, they have their own stressors. They have their own family relationships. They have their own mood swings. If, if they're women, they struggle with hormones. Like they have work conflict. Like they have, they didn't get enough sleep the night before. They have a whole experience outside of you. And again, logically, you may know that, but the way that trauma is set up, the way that trigger is set up, it's more like, well, if you really love me, you would get over it. Like, I'm here. I'm present. <laughs> there is, I'm, I'm laughing, but there, there is so much selfishness and ego, but it comes, you know, when we, when we think about reparenting ourselves, that ego comes from an important place. It comes from a place where that's trying to protect the little girl that never got the protection before. So she overcorrects. And to my point, your overcorrection may help in so many settings, but you don't know when to turn it off. You don't know when this does not fit. And so you continue to be in overdrive. And your body is scanning the environment for threat. The threat, the threat signal stays on. Like the Batman signal is always on, there's always red alert until proven otherwise. And there is no such thing as otherwise until you do the body-based healing work um, and start to do actions contrary to the habits that you've been doing your whole life. Until you do that, it's going to stay exactly like it is until you start to have a new normal. And the second reason why this will continue to, to occur as long as you have a relationship with another human being is because you're going to always be learning each other. Even if you meet one of those people that is a kindred friendship, you know, exact same sense of humor, you know, love the same things. Maybe y'all grew up together or grew up in similar ways. And so y'all have so much in common. You're going to communicate something that you assume that they're going to immediately receive because they get everything else. And there's going to be a disconnect. 
And y'all may know it at the time or you may not know it until there's a breakdown down the road. But here's the thing for love avoidance as well. Love avoidance, we're good at getting the heck out of Dodge. We are good that at the first sign of conflict, of disagreement, of miscommunication, of discord, of rupture, we know, quote unquote, there's quotes, air quotes there. We know from experience that this is the first sign of gradual destruction. So it's best to get out now. So we are very good at pulling back at either cutting off the relationship or emotionally and mentally pulling back. So we're not telling them as many things. We're not initiating phone calls and texts as much as we did. Uh, We're only giving a little piece of the story or a little piece of fun because we're testing how they're going to respond. Not knowing the person doesn't know that they're being tested. So when they respond normally or yeah, when they respond normally, because when you're in threat response, you need an over-exaggerated response from the other person to compensate. If you have got in your head that that person is emotionally neglectful and they respond with a normal, hey, good to see you. And it's not like, girl, I have missed you. You're like, "Uh uh-huh, see, you fake. I knew you didn't really care in the first, you know, like it is all, uh, it is our projection. But the thing about it is it feels so real. The the feeling in your body is a million times stronger than any logical thought that you have. So, of course, it's going to win out if you're even thinking logical thoughts at all. Many of us are are going off what we what we think is our gut response when really is our trauma response. And part of your healing journey towards being a heal and love woman is learning, OK, which one is me? What is my trauma? What's my intuition? And learning how to distinguish throughout Um, between those voices. Hey, we hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Let's take a quick break to say thanks to this week's sponsors. Lowe's knows how to get your lawn ready for spring. And right now, you can get up to $20 off Select Scott's Triple Action Fertilizer. Plus, get a Cobalt 40-volt 15-inch string trimmer or leaf blower. Your choice, $149, only at Lowe's. Get set for spring. Visit us in-store or online today. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 3 9 through 322. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Unlock the best of the world with Trafalgar. Book your next vacation with up to 15% off top-selling tours and explore trending worldwide destinations like Portugal, Egypt, Japan, and Italy while enjoying one-of-a-kind experiences along the way. To unlock savings, contact your travel advisor today. Call Trafalgar at 866-513-1995 or visit trafalgar.com slash deals. That's T-R-A-F-A-L-G-A-R dot com slash deals. Welcome to BreezeLine, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile, because we've got more reliable home internet that's a whole lot faster. In fact, 10 times faster. No, seriously, because we have real internet backed by our fiber-powered network. And T-Mobile, well, they just have a 5G cellular network. So act now to get superior home internet. Find your perfect speed with prices starting at just $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to BreezeLine.com to learn more. So I wanted to make sure in this episode that I talked about three of the consequences of staying in the habit of withholding love from secure and available people that you want to build connections with and hopes that it would encourage you to do the work that's necessary to break these patterns um, and to also have awareness. You know, I think this is something that's so common and so instinctual and so reflexive that We may know that this happens, you know, and I'm sure I've talked about this in in different points when I've talked about love avoidance. And it seems like one of the small things, but it's a big thing. It is a huge blocker. It is a huge threat towards being able to rest in secure and healthy love in all all formats, in in your family relationships, in your romantic partnerships, in your friendships, and also in relationship with yourself, which I'm going to As I explain this, you're going to hear why I say that. So the first consequence of you continuing to withhold love and seeing punishment, like emotional punishment by shutting down 
um, being half present, half there, half not, starting to plan your exit strategy. Um, um, if y'all are out on a date and you start to get into a sour mood and you're there, but you're letting them know that you're not having a good time, whatever it may be, the first consequence of that is it reinforces your fight and flight response in your nervous system. So remember I said this is a body-based response. This is a fight response. You hurt me. So mm, is it fight or is it freeze? Let's see. I think this is more parasympathetic because everything is slowing down and shutting down. But I still want to say it's fight because the intention behind it is like, it's like the porcupine whose spines pop up. <laughs> like, is it possible to be a little bit of both, you know? So it is your defense so that whatever tries to hurt you gets away and and thinks twice before it does it again. But then also it is it is a bidding for you to be taken care of and um, a waiting for you to see if the coast is clear for you to let down those walls. You know, I think most of us or maybe I'll speak for myself when I when I have struggled with this. The love avoidance is or the withholding of the love is actually a bid for you to come closer. It is really that push pull. It is. I'm so hurt. Please tell me that you love me, that you see me, that you care for me. Please apologize for emotionally abandoning me, abandoning me, for rejecting me. Please, please don't do this again. And for me, in my mind, when I trace this in my body, there is like a little super small, like fetus size Sheena that is like kind of curled up, right? That really needs to be loved and taken care of, and that's that's going to look different for everybody. If you do, if you relate to that part, um, how your trauma and how your inner child shows up, depending on what trigger, what memory, and what situation is happening. But that's important for you to know because being able to be in touch with that voice and what she needs and what's going on is how you move forward. But going back to the first consequence, um, reinforcing the fight or flight response, it reinforces that. To get someone to stop and to get someone to change course is this is what I do. Here's the thing, though, y'all. I've said this before. That may help with people who don't have boundaries, people who are super passive, people who are super codependent. I may be calling out some of you right there. But, you know, with those people, they will take that emotional manipulation and be able to be driven by it. They are able to be manipulated by it. But someone with healthy and secure boundaries, they love you and they want to move closer to you, but there's going to come a day and a time when they're like, okay, I'm not playing this game. Either you you do your work and when you are ready to be available to me, I will be here, but I'm not going to continue to play this game with you or they're going to peace out. And they're going to peace out, not because they're abandoning you, but because they have self-love. They have love for you, but they have love for themselves. But meanwhile, if you are not conscious and aware of what's happening, your story is going to just be reinforced again, which is, you know, people leave, you know, they couldn't take it. They couldn't take my boundaries. Um, They said they love me, but they really didn't. I need someone who accepts all of me and all of my emotions and all of this stuff that really allows you to not do the work that you that you need to do to be in charge of your your side to be in charge of your side of the street um to do your own emotional welfare work which sadly y'all I have some sad news for you even when you are in the most healthiest of relationships you are still going to have to do your own emotional work they can't fix everything your relationship with you is still the most important one. Every, all, everything that they do is extra. Everything that they do is an extension of what you do for yourself. And as a hopeless romantic myself, I hear that the phrase these days is love a girl. <laughs> as a love a girl myself, as someone who loves the idea of love and soulmates and all that stuff, and I believe that it exists. I truly believe that it exists. You you are still going to be your own superhero. 
you are still the romance that you have with yourself, the intimacy that you build with yourself, the ability to find resolution and answers and enjoy and pleasure within yourself. That's going to end up being your ultimate answer. And um, you trying to get there mentally and you trying to like make it happen by might. It actually doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a slower process. It's a deeper process. It's a more intimate process. It can be a very infuriating process. Um, but so if that's the case, the answer for you to not live in threat response is not meeting your knight or nitrous in shining armor because you're still going to be the same person that you were before just with that commitment. You're still going to have the same triggers, the same insecurities, the same inability to turn off the threat response, the same reactivity. Um, you may be better at communicating, but all that stuff is still going to be in your body. So you need to work on your triggers and your traumas yourself so that you can receive the love. So let me say the next one here. You are the next consequence of um, consistently withholding love as your go-to response uh, to punish people who are not showing up in the way that you want them to, um, to kind of get them back in line, is it robs you from being able to enjoy the moment. Y'all, I cannot tell you how many times I've had an experience where, again, I logically know what's going on. And this is a person that I've had fun with. I enjoy, you know, maybe I had planned to have a, a great time. And I know that whatever just happened is minor. Or even if it's not that minor, it's something that could easily be resolved later. Or I have enough emotional um, emotional currency in the bank with this person to know their intention, to know their heart, to know that they would never do anything to hurt me and that will always want to protect me, make me happy. I'll have, I have all that, but my brain and my body ain't communicating. And so I'm there and I am not being able to relax and have fun and, and, and giggle and, and flirt. If it's a person that I, that I flirt with, I'm not able to just relax and be present. And it sucks. It sucks when you do not know how to turn this off because it stops you. Like, it's not even that you're punishing the other person now more than you're punishing yourself because you have to wait. Like you're recognizing all the stuff in your body and your brain and your mind, and you're having a little war with yourself. And so now you're triggered about that, but now you're triggered with yourself and you're upset with yourself about just, girl, just just eat the cheese sticks. Just just laugh at the jokes. Just, you know, do whatever. <laughs> the song that's playing is a song that you like. Sing along. You're you're not even singing the song because you're so focused on being ma- mad or being mean. You get what I'm saying? So you and you trying to punish other people, you're punishing yourself because you're losing time. You're losing the moment. You're you're robbing yourself of joy, of happiness, of pleasure. And for what? If you are with someone who's secure and healthy and you also have the emotional currency in the bank with them, that you also know that they are all of these things, enjoy yourself. This stuff is most of the time, it is not something that is universal or not something that is going to matter a year from now, six months from now, hell, a week from now, you know, and If it is something that's a crucial red flag again while y'all hanging out, like y'all got bigger fish to fry, but if it is something that's just a part of humans learning how to human together, let's have fun tonight and let's trust that it's safe to have fun. It's safe to relax. That where is my trust at? And this is where I'm kind of switching into a different topic, but it's for me, something that has helped me is where is my trust? Is my trust in this person? And that's where I'm getting access to fun and to love and to joy? Or is this, do I, is there another source that I can pull from? Is this the source that I want it to be? And if it's not this person, what source do I want to pull from? And what does that look like? So that's the second consequence of you withholding love that you punish yourself. And then, and then you don't even realize that you're punishing yourself. You know, this is, when I think about 
the moments in time in the past where I was withholding love from people. Remember how I opened up the podcast saying that it felt good? It felt so good. It was enjoyable to watch them squirm. It was enjoyable for them to, you know, trip over themselves to make it right. Like the way that that would fill up my chest with so much glee and my back would get straighter and my head would get higher. Like that was enjoyment, right? But when I look at the people I did that with, they were people who were unavailable to me. So of course, like that was the only way I was going to have fun because they weren't going to show up in any other way. In every other way, they were going to be flaky. They were going to drop the ball. They were going to be inconsistent. I was going to have to mother them more. Or I was going to have to be the one that was in charge. So, of course, that's where I'm going to have fun because they didn't know how to show up for me. But when you're around people who do want to show up for you and the people who are on your level, where they're actual peers, and you're not taking care of them and they're not taking care of you, when you find your people then it is a punishment to you. And so, you know, as I've gone through life and and found myself more and more around people who are my people and had deeper relationships with them, all of the games and all that stuff is not is not enjoyable. And if I meet or come across people who also it feels like they're doing the gamey thing, then I just allow them to they are released. They get to they get to find their own path, but I do not manage I manage my expectations when it comes to them. So last consequence that happens when you are withholding love from secure and available people is you're actually reinforcing the behavior that you don't want. So I'm gonna tell a not connected story that I think is actually connected. When I one of the jobs that I had back in the day was when I was in school is I used to work at a um, pre-K. I was at college and there was an on-campus daycare. And so, you know, part of the training, like all places, even before COVID, good hygiene, right? So every time you go into a, a classroom, you wash your hands. I was a floating teacher. So every time you go into an, a classroom, you wash your hands, you know, germs and all that other stuff. So it was just common practice. There was one teacher on the first day I went into her room she saw me wash my hands and she said, oh my God, thank you so much for washing your hands. I really appreciate that. Not everybody does that. So thank you so much for, for taking care of that. Do you know with that woman, I was so excited to go into her classroom and I went over and beyond with her and she automatically had a favorite spot in my heart for her acknowledging me. Now, I know, as an adult, <laughs> now, <laughs> as, a, as a grown adult, and, you know, mental health professional, and also, you know, she was a master teacher, like, she knew what she was doing. She knew that starting off with positive reinforcement was going to continue to gain good behavior from me, or at least behavior that would want to elicit praise and make her happy, even... Um, whether or not she acknowledged me or not, like that set the standard, right? And um, yeah, and she was always ahead of everybody else, even if she never complimented me again. And I can't remember at this point if that was something she continued to do, but that set the bar. I'm saying that because when you are in a relationship and you're constantly pointing out the things that you don't like, And what you're criticizing them for and nitpicking and all that stuff, those are the things that are going to grow. Those are the things that get the focus. They either grow because they actually do become more numerous or you have built um, you have built a pattern and only looking for the bad instead of looking for the good. So now before you used to say, I really love that this person has this and has that and, you know, that we get along so well. And it was just these couple things that I don't like. So it stops being like that to where now those things that you used to like before, they're either not that important, they're off the radar, they are inconsequence, inconsequential, they um, are now morphed into being negatives, and now you have a whole long list of more criticisms because you have built a relationship that is based on you looking for what's wrong instead of celebrating what's right. And the person on the other side of that is only hearing and experiencing 
how they're not measuring up, what they're doing wrong. And again, someone who struggles with codependence, low self-esteem, um, maybe if if you are a woman listening to this and you're in a relationship with someone that's someone's in a relationship with you, if they have a critical mother or a critical and abrasive women from their past, they may be super confident in other areas, but they may take that abuse from you because they are used to women abusing them, which that dynamic down the road does not help out because then you're bitter and resentful for being critical and being somebody's mother. And then they are resentful of you for never seeing how they're good enough. And then y'all have to unravel all of that. So when you are built, when you build a relationship on withholding love and finding all the things that are wrong, that's what grows. You have more and more time and experiences and seasons and chapters and days and weeks that you are in your shutdown response um, because that's how your relationship functions. And then you're like, well, if they just fix this, then I could be safe and I could be free. No, 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 no. Again, I'm not talking about toxic and unavailable relationships with dysfunctional people. In those relationships, first, you shouldn't be there. And if you are there, you need to have your boundaries up. That makes sense for you to be there. But in safe and secure places with people who care for you, you can have your own boundaries and you can have your own standards. But where where your mind goes and where your response goes, that is up to you. And as someone who's had to do this work, I know how infuriating that is. Like I just listed multiple examples of how everything in me could not fight the extreme deep physical response to leave, to pop an attitude, to throw it back in their face, to do a, I just think it's funny how when we're sharing a cookie, you know, and I just bring up a fight, you know, like I get it. I get it. I've been there. And that's why I can tell you with love and with confidence that this comes back to us. It's the good news and it's the bad news. The good news is that you you actually do have the power that you've wanted to have this whole time. You absolutely, the same power that you're trying to grasp by withholding love and withholding comfort and and softness and sensuality and, and connection and intimacy, you still have that exact same power. But the person that you need to manipulate is yourself. You're not manipulating other people. You're learning how to do emotional judo, mental judo with yourself. That is the real skill. So that if there is a conversation that you need to have, that you can have it with love, that you can have it with positivity, that you can have it with openness so that the other person doesn't feel beat down upon, so that they don't feel unseen, that they don't feel taken for granted, and that they need to look for an emotionally safe place where they feel seen, right? If you want a relationship that is based on mutual appreciation and gratitude and someone seeing everything that you are, it, seeing everything that you are and being thoughtful for you and giving you the benefit of the doubt and being patient with you and not ruining the moment when they're upset, you got to bring that energy yourself, girl. You, that is, that is a you thing. That is a you thing. And again, no, I'm not even sorry to tell you. I, I tell y'all that because I want y'all to have healthy love and healthy relationships and make these changes. Okay. All righty. So that is it for this episode. I am sending you all so, 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 so much love. If these are things that you want to work on, of course, you know, the recovery school is the place for you to do that, um, for us to work on becoming love available, love balanced and connected to our love worthiness. Um, there is one of the bonus courses that are attached to the program is our body work course that you can use to get in touch with your body and get grounded when you are triggered. And there are different exercises that will lead you through there. They're all audio so that you do not, um, wait, are they all? Yes, those are all audio <laughs> so that you can be present in your body, not worried about mine. Um, and then uh, we also have connections to our tapping course as well that also helps you get grounded. Um, it's a skill that you can take with you everywhere you go, um, especially on dates and on outings when people are upset with you. And I have multiple different uh, scripts and tracks that I run through with you. Those are videos that you can follow along with me and I'll lead you through. And most some of the most common 
concerns and thoughts that people have coming into the program that they're working through. So would love for you to join. Again, you can go to the recoveryschool.com and you'll be taken directly to our overview page there to read what, what's included. You get lifetime access to that, to our community, um, to our group call archive, to a bunch of other bonus tools as well. Um, and all that is there for you to, to look at and go over. And of course, you can find that on our main web page as well, um, blackgirlsheal.org. So um, just click on work with us at the top. So that is it for now, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm sending you so much blessings and love. You can do it. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Take care of yourselves. Hey, so thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoy what you've learned, it doesn't have to stop here. You can check out the blackgirlsheal.org website and grab the worksheet for this week's episode or any of your other favorite episodes from our shop with an overview of the main points, healing circle discussion questions and journal prompts and challenges that you can take with you into the week. Also, you can check out any of our other self-study and coaching programs, resources, and freebies to help you heal from the intimacy disorders of love addiction, love avoidance, love deprivation, and the trauma that causes it. The best time to start or restart your healing journey is now. We hope you enjoy all of these resources. And until next time, remember you are so loved and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Welcome to BreezeLine, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile, because we've got more reliable home internet that's a whole lot faster. In fact, 10 times faster. No, seriously, because we have real internet backed by our fiber-powered network. And T-Mobile, well, they just have a 5G cellular network. So act now to get superior home internet. Find your perfect speed with prices starting at just $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to BreezeLine.com to learn more. Discover South Carolina presents The Palmetto Porch, a podcast featuring some of the most uniquely charming destinations across the Palmetto State. I'm Devin Whitmire. Join me as I find out what's off the beaten path as I speak to South Carolina locals who know their towns best. Find The Palmetto Porch wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information about our show, visit scpalmettoporch.com.